As I was praying, crying out to God, just a little bit more volume, Michael, please. As I was praying and crying out to God, you know, Lord, it was quickening to my heart what his purpose, his plan, and his mission is for all of our lives. And you can start the clock back there, too. But God really wants to do something in you today. I mean, today. Tell somebody, today. Point your finger at him. I know, I know it's not polite, but point, say, God wants to do something in you today. We know that all of creation, all of creation, all of creation, the angelic, the microscopic, the ocean life, the plant life, the animal life, the solar systems, the galaxies, they're all waiting for one thing. And matter of fact, they're even in travail. And what are they waiting for? They're waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. They're waiting for the sons of God, the daughters of God, to come forth in the glory of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. That's what they're waiting for. And I perceive with all of my heart that we are right on the edge of the return of Christ. I believe that we are on the very edge of the manifestation, the expression of God in the earth. We know that Christ was the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. But now that Christ has ascended to heaven and he's at the right hand of the heavenly father, he is now waiting for his enemy to be made his footstool. And he is waiting for his church, his bride, his beloved to make herself ready and to begin to come down the aisle because the wedding date is coming upon us. We are getting ready. We are getting ready for a wedding. Now, I know you ladies who have gotten married, you've had the privilege and the honor of walking the aisle and seeing your beloved standing up front waiting for you, but that will be a new experience for us men. Hallelujah! <laughs> but I want to have my white garment on, amen? And God is doing something. Now, I believe with all my heart that God is going to do a quick work in the days that we live in. And that when it looks the bleakest, when the church looks like it's in its most hopeless condition, like Ezekiel 37, dead, dry bones laying everywhere. But as we begin to prophesy, God begins to bring the bones together. I want you to know that God has brought the bones together, the fivefold ministry. The apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher have linked arms together in spite of denominations, in spite of different titles or different ministries. We have linked our arms together and we've done it for one purpose, that the name of Jesus might be lifted. That we might lift up his name in all the earth. So all of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God because that was the divine plan of God from the beginning was that he would have those who would rule and reign with him. They would walk at his side. They would sit upon his throne and they would judge the angels. And that throughout eternity, we will rule and reign with him. And so what does God do? He comes up with this marvelous plan because he takes man that has fallen literally subject to the devil and literally the devil had become his father and he said, I am going to take the very seed of the devil himself and I am going to transform and change it and I am going to cause them to be my children. Isn't that amazing? See, if the princesses of this world would have known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. I know it may seem that because of what you have been through, all of the hardships, all of the difficulties, all the problems you've experienced, like as if you feel like you're the victim. But I want you to know that we are coming to the time and we're even there now to where all of a sudden you're no longer the victim, you're the victor. And the devil will regret. He will literally despise the day he began to mess with you. Because all things work together for good to them that love God, that are called according to his riches and glory, and that love him. See, I don't know about you. I know in the natural I'm not allowed to hate men, thank God, but I sure can hate the devil. I tell you right now, I want to get back at the devil. I want to make him hurt. I want to make him squirm. I want to step on him. I want to stop on him. I want to chop him up with the word. And I think we ought to have a Holy Ghost vengeance. I think we ought to be angry with the devil. 
I get mad at the devil. I watch him afflict people. I watch him hurt people. And Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come that you might have life. Woo! Don't that just send chills up your spine when you say the word life? Shout it, life, life, life. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life. You might have life, not they might have life, he might have life, she might have life, but you, that I might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus wants you to have life. But Pastor Mike, how can I have life? Well, you'll have to come back tonight and hear the rest of the message. We had a special guest speaker tonight, but something happened. They had to leave town. And so praise the Lord, I get another opportunity to preach. <laughs> Glory to God. See, I love to preach. You know that. It takes faith for me to give up the pulpit. And I've been doing it almost, almost 80 times a month I'm giving up the pulpit. <laughs> well, you give the Lord a hand clap. Isn't that God? <laughs> So anyways, I want you to know, man, Jesus came because he wants you to have life. Life is when you have a big old smile on your face from ear to ear like the, like the, like the cat that ate the canary. It's when you can't help but shout. I mean, when life begins to bubble, when life begins to blossom, when life begins to come forth, it brings a shout. See, there's life in this place. I can tell you, you know where there's death. All you got to do is walk into a graveyard and everything's quiet and still and eerie. I mean, there's some places you go to that are just like that. You walk into the door and everything is dead as a doornail. But then you go into a place where there's life. I like to, I remember when my children, my son, he was born. Now, my other children were not born in a hospital. They were born at home. But I remember going into the nursery of the hospital and you heard life. You heard crying. You heard noise, you heard breath, you heard, you heard shouting. <laughs> there is life. Where there's life, there's a shout. <laughs> Hallelujah! But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life. And not just have it life, but have it more abundantly. That means that he wants to pour his oil out upon you, his wine upon you. He wants to pour his life into you. He wants you to have a pep to your walk. He wants you to have a dance to your feet. He wants you to have a shout in your lungs. He wants you to have excitement in your life. I tell you what, who wants a dead church? I want a resurrected church. Jesus said, why do you seek the living among the dead? <laughs> you ain't going to go to a dead place and find living people. You got to go to a place where there's resurrection power. And wherever Jesus is, there's resurrection. Because he said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. See, he is the life. And he is the life in me. And if you're born again, washed in the blood, if you got the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost has got you, you have got life. But how can we have life if there's death? You got to hear the voice of the resurrection. You got to hear the voice of Jesus when he said to Lazarus, who stunk after four days of being in the tomb, Lazarus, come forth. I believe with all my heart and my innermost being that God is beginning to call forth his church by name. He's beginning calling you. Sister, he called your name last Sunday, and he brought you out of darkness into the light. He brought you out of death into life. He brought you out of sorrow into joy. He brought you out of misery into such escalation and such happiness. You don't know what to do. That's what Christ wants to do for you. Tell your neighbor for you. See, I want life to rub off on you today. I want you to come in one way and go out another. Maybe you came in with your head hanging low, but I want to see you walking out with your eyes lifted towards heaven and with a dance to your feet and a shout in your, in your lungs. Amen. Yeah. Woo! But God wants us to have life. Now, I tell you what, let's take a look here in John chapter 17. You know, John chapter 17, all of John 14, 15, 16, and 17 is so amazing. And in John 17, we get to see as Jesus speaks directly to his heavenly father what his will is for our life. See, God has a plan for your life. God has a purpose for your life. The devil does too. We know what he comes to do. 
For this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. I'm telling you what, Jesus is the demolisher. Jesus is the conqueror. Jesus is the overcomer. Jesus is the giant killer. Jesus is the one who comes and destroys all the plans the devil had for you. Because he has a wonderful plan for you. You've got to make this thing personal. Yes, it's for us, but it's for you. It's for you he died. It's for you he took the sins upon his body. It's for you he took the stripes upon his back that you might be healed. It's for you that he went to the cross. It's for you he rose again. That you could be like him. See, that's what God's plan is. God is God's plan. You know how you can tell when somebody is walking in Jesus? Because the fruits of Jesus will be manifested. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance will be manifested in you. The more I have Jesus and the more Jesus has me, the more I'll be just like him. But here Jesus is praying and we get an insight image and you need to study this because in John 17, Jesus spoke about himself 70 times in 26 verses. Now, why would he speak about himself so much? Well, this is not only the only place. Actually, if you would study from, ver from chapter 14, in, verse, in chapter 14, Jesus spoke about himself 87 times. I'm talking about in chapter 14, where there's 31 scriptures, you can highlight it. He spoke about himself 87 times. And then in chapter 15, he spoke about himself 52 times. In chapter 16, he spoke about himself 68 times. He talked about himself. Now, of course, if you and I would talk about ourselves to that extent, people would say we're egotistical, we're self-centered, self-loving, self-serving. But, you know, when we look at Jesus, we understand he's not self-centered, self-loving, self-serving. He said, I only do what my Father wants me to do. He said, no man takes my life, I lay it down on myself. He said, this is the perfect expression of love that a man would lay down his life for another and not just for his friends, but for his enemies. Do you understand? While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Whew. Come on, how many people would even dare die for a friend, let alone a sinner? We, 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 a, 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 an enemy. We were enemies of God by our works and by our deeds and by our conduct. But Jesus died for me when I was still his enemy. See, I have not had one thought of whether or not God loves me since I gave my heart to Christ in 1975. You know why? Because he proved it when he went to Calvary. That's enough evidence for me. And that's not including all the prayers and all the miracles and all the signs and all the wonders and all the times he's forgiven me. But when he went to Calvary, he boldly declared in the loudest way possible to all creation, I love Mike Yeager. You ought to put your name in there. God loves and put your name in there. He proved it when he gave his son and when Christ went to Calvary. Give him a shout and a hand clap. Come on. He's worthy. He's worthy. He bought me with his blood. I no longer belong to myself. I belong to him. And so in John 17, he begins to talk to the Father. And if you jump down there in verse, in verse 20, we discover what he did it all for. Neither pray I for these alone and not for them all, but, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Listen, verse 21, this is God's ultimate plan for us in this life and the next, that they all, say all, may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. How is the world going to believe that God the Father sent his only begotten son, Jesus, when we become one with God? See, I've got to become one with God. I've got to become one with God in word and deed and thought and action and desire and longings and everything I do. I want to become one with God. Now, don't misunderstand me. I do not want to be God. Hallelujah. 
I do not want to know all your problems. I don't want to have to keep track of maybe a hair on your head, though some of you it's easier. <laughs> I don't want to be all powerful, all not present, and all knowing. Now, sometimes people have claimed I have been all knowing, but I'm not. Maybe I act like an all know it all. But I want you to know God knows it all. I do not want to be God. But I want to be one with Him in His nature, in His character, in His, his love, in His mercy, in His goodness, in, in His divine compassion. I want to be one with God in His holiness. I want to be one with God. I was made to be one with God. Do you understand that? You were made to be one with God. You are made to live in that same realm that God lives in. Where all things are possible. Do you know you were created to where what you speak comes to pass? Did you know death and life is in the power of the tongue? Did you know you can call those things which be not as though they were when you are in harmony, in harmony with the King of kings and the Lord of lords? I'm telling you, we have such an inheritance. We are so blessed. We are blessed beyond my wildest imagination. We are blessed beyond our ability to proclaim it. We are blessed beyond the comprehension of the natural mind. The scripture says, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither entered into the heart of man those things which God has prepared for them that love him. Do you love him today? Do you love him? Say, Lord, I love you. And God has such wonderful things planned for those who love him. Now, I, you know what? I'm going to love Jesus more by the end of the day than I did at the beginning. I'm going to love, you know, it's, it's hard to believe. My wife and I have been married for 34 years. I can honestly tell you, I love my precious blue-eyed babe more now than I did when I first met her, praise the Lord. And you know what causes that love in my heart? It's not me. It's Jesus Christ. Christ in me, the hope of glory. So he said, Father, this is what I'm praying. The last prayer he prayed before he went to the cross. And he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do was this. Father, Father, this is what I'm asking of you. Let them be one with us. One, you know, heaven is not going to be segregated. It's not going to be divided by the color of your skin, by your education, by your wealth, by your nationality, by your, the language you speak. We're all going to be speaking the same language. I already know what the language of heaven is. I can already speak the language of heaven. Do you want me to speak some of the language of heaven? Love. <laughs> the language of heaven is love. <laughs> God is love. And that's all the language we're going to speak is love. I think we ought to practice the language of heaven right now. Hug your neighbor and tell them you love them. <laughs> Go ahead. They won't bite you. Say, I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Woo! They will know you are my disciples because of your love for one another. Woo! The language of love. Amen. You know, the language of love can be spoken through your eyes. It can be spoken by a touch. It can be spoken by a deed or an action. The language of love is amazing. And love never fails. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his love will never pass away. Ooh, don't that make you happy? Don't it make you want to shout a little bit? I tell you, when life begins to bubble up inside of you like rivers of living water, you can't help but shout and dance. Listen, you're not going to frighten me if all of a sudden the spirit of life hits you in Christ Jesus. And because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. So life might just begin to bubble up in you and you might just find yourself running in this place. You might find yourself shouting. You might find yourself singing. You might find yourself laying on the floor and shaking in the Holy Ghost. You might find yourself drunk and laughing in the Spirit because it's so good, it's so awesome, it's so wonderful. Woo! I just got to shout. Woo! Hallelujah! There's a river of life flowing through this place. See, all these, I don't know how you know how a river is formed, but a river is formed when all these little tributaries come down off of the mountaintop. And how many know that God's on the mountaintop? 
And as you go up on the mountaintop, you're like a little tributary of a stream floating down. And all the streams begin to flow together. And it becomes a rushing, mighty river. Woo! So when we take your little stream of love and my little stream of love and her little stream of love and their little stream of love and we all begin to flow together in the Holy Ghost, it's a mighty river of love. And the thing I love about the river of love, Pastor, what are you preaching? I don't know. I'm just speaking. (laughs) When the river of love begins to flow, anyone who steps in it is made whole. The blind see and the deaf hear and the lame dance and the lepers are cleansed and the dead are raised to life again. Praise the Lord. A river of love flowing out of our bellies because that's what Jesus said. Out of your belly. Go ahead, pop your belly. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Living water. And the more you become like Jesus, the more the rivers flow. Look what it says here. Let's jump up a little higher in chapter 17. Look at what it, this is so amazing. And matter of fact, I wish I had the amplified version because what he says, he just is absolutely astounding. Look what, let's begin here in verse 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words, say the words, which thou gavest me, and they have received, and have known surely that came out from thee, and that they have believed that thou hast sent me. I pray for them, I pray, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. This is, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now, if you could see in the spirit realm, you would see written on your forehead and your hands the property of Jesus Christ. See, the devil don't know who he's messing with. We belong to God. We're his property. Our names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. We are children of the King. We are conquerors. We are overcomers. We are kings in life, and we have a king over us all, and his name is Jesus. And he says, these are mine, and they're yours, and they're all ours, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou has given me that they may be one as we are I believe that God is able to keep us I believe that God is able to keep us if we'll look to him he'll keep us while I was with them in the world I kept them in thy name those that are gave us me I've kept and none of them is lost but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled and now come I to thee these things I speak in the world that they may have listen that they may have my joy fulfilled in them. Now, this is very important. Jesus said, I want them to have the same joy I have. You know, how can we liken the joy of the Lord? The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And the reason why a lot of people, they're, they're fainting in their minds, according to Hebrews chapter 12, it says, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame thereof. Joy is not based on what's happening. Joy comes from God. It is the glory of God. Joy, you know, how much joy did you have when your wife gave birth to that precious little child? Wasn't there joy? I know it was happiness, but it was joy. Joy. Well, it says that we have joy unspeakable and full of glory. How does joy come? It says that it comes by believing. See, when you begin to believe what God says about you, when you read in there that I'll never leave you nor forsake you, and you believe that, it'll make you shout. When you believe that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. See, faith produces joy. Unbelief 
produces worry, fear, anxiety. Unbelief says, well, God ain't going to do what he says he's going to do, but yet the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. Has he said it? Will he not do it? Has he spoken it? Will he not make it good? Well, Pastor Mike, I just don't know. I don't know how to get joy. Joy comes from believing. Though now you see him not, not it says 1 Peter chapter 1, though you see him not, now believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Have you ever had joy that flowed so strong that even though you had every reason not to ha be happy or shout, how many have ever shouted when you had every reason not to shout? How many of you began to dance when you had every reason not to dance? How many of you got excited when you had every reason not to be excited? You know why? Because that was faith bubbling up in your soul. It's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's bubbling in my soul. I'm singing and shouting since Jesus made me whole. See, and when faith rises in your heart, sh a shout will be on your lips. Well, I'm going to show you how to get this. But Jesus said that the joy, that they might have the joy that you have given me. I want them to have the same joy that you have given to me. And I want my joy to remain in them. See, this life is not supposed to be a drudgery. Oh, I didn't say we're not going to have trials and tests. Many are, the, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers them out of them all. You know, I know when you watch a natural sports game, you don't know who's going to win. But we already know who won. We already know who paid the price. We already know the victory has been bought in the blood of Jesus Christ. So he wants his joy to be in you. And if you're, a, if you're walking where Jesus walked, and if you're talking like Jesus talked, and if you're thinking like Jesus thought, I'm telling you, you're going to have joy. Now let's just talk about something here before we close and we minister to people. There's three things you need to know about yourself. You are made from dirt. Say dirt. <laughs> I remember our little girl, Naomi who's with the Lord now, when she was real small, I would have her take her fingers and rub them over my mustache. I don't know why I would do this. And I would say to her, say dirt. And I think it was probably one of the first words she ever memorized, she ever, ever spoke. She said dirt. She'd rub her little fingers in my mustache and say dirt, dirt. I don't know why I called my mustache dirt, but I called it dirt. But the Bible says we were made from dirt. Not only were you made from dirt, but also you are an oven, say an oven. Now listen, if God is a consuming fire, which he is, right? If we're made in the image and the likeness of God, then we are consuming fire. Say, I'm a consuming fire. You know, that's why we're not reptiles. We're not cold-blooded animals or cold-blooded reptiles. Amen? We have, and we know the doctor, the medical world can tell whether or not you're healthy by the temperature of your body. You know, that's why the Bible says, I would rather have you cold or hot, but because you're lukewarm. Not only are you a fire, but you are also an incubator. Say incubator. Women, you know what I'm talking about? When you got the egg and the seed coming together, you're going to give birth. You're going to hatch another human being. Is that not correct? Now, this is not complicated, but it is a spiritual law that the dirt does not care what seed you plant in it. Dirt doesn't care what seed you plant in it. Whatever dirt, whatever seed you plant in it, it could be corn, it could be watermelons, it could be pumpkins, it could be... Now, if you don't like pumpkins, why in the world would you plant pumpkins in your garden? If you don't like spinach, why would you plant spinach in your garden? See, you are, you are dirt. And God took that hunk of dirt and he breathed into it the seed of life and it became a living soul. You are dirt. Your dirt doesn't care what seed you plant in it. If you plant the wrong seeds, you're going to get the wrong results. Now, when I planted, when I planted seed into the soul of my wife, and you're mature enough to understand what I'm saying, out came a child in my likeness and the image with her combined. 
And, and you know what I'm talking about? That child came out looking like me. If you don't believe it, you can look at my sons and my daughter, and you'll see the image of the father is in the children. And praise God, they got some of the things from her that they didn't get from me, like their blue eyes. Praise the Lord. So there's good qualities that came from my wife. But I, I am just like a woman, and I can be pregnant. Amen. Sisters, tell you, the man next to you, you are pregnant. I'm not pregnant. Oh, yes, you are, because you are going to give birth to whatever seed you have embraced. Whatever seed you embrace, it is that simple. You know what? You can have an awesome garden with wonderful soil, and you could plant all this amazing, expensive, hybrid seed, but if you let weeds grow in that soil, it will choke the life out of the seed. Now, I'm supposed to give birth to the image and the likeness of Jesus in the earth. I am dirt, so I've got to plant the right seed. That's why. Do you know what the seed is? The seed is Jesus Christ. That's why there's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's why the Bible says, when I see him, I will be like him. It is that simple. You plant the right seed into the soul of your mind and your heart and your soul. You become obsessed with that seed. You know what? It, people don't understand. Your eye is the gateway to your heart. It's who you are. Whatever you set your eyes upon will end up possessing you and filling you. Did you hear what I said? Whatever you set your eyes upon, whether you like it or not, you will become impregnated by it. You put your eyes on, on the problems, on the difficulties, on the hardship. Listen. Peter got his eyes on Jesus out there in the midst of the storm at 3 o'clock in the morning. They thought it was a ghost. They cried out, oh, it's a ghost. All of these uh, uh, brave men crying out like a bunch of little babies. Oh, it's a ghost. And Jesus said, hey, be a good comfort. It's I. And Peter got his eyes on Jesus. You know, that's what faith is. Faith is when you've got your eyes on Jesus. You've got your eyes on his will and his word. And all of a sudden, that faith rises up inside of you, and it begins to possess you, and you begin to walk where Jesus walks, and you begin to talk what Jesus talks, and you begin to do what Jesus does. That's what faith is. Faith is simply when your eyes have been so filled with the truth, that's all you can think, that's all you can talk, that's all you can live. So I'm going to show you. It's like a, 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 a caterpillar wrapping itself in a cocoon. And after a certain amount of time, it breaks out of the cocoon and you got a beautiful butterfly. How many want to be beautiful butterflies? Come on. I mean, how many want to be transformed and changed? You know, we're trying to read all these different secrets of how we can be changed and we can be transformed. It's really quite simple. Number one, you got to plant the right seed into the soul of your mind. He told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, he said, if you'll not turn away from my word, and you'll, if you'll just meditate on it night and day, you will be able to do all that is written there. And see, the meditation, what you are looking at, will possess you, will control you, will direct you, and will fill you. People get obsessed with sports because that's what they're looking at. People get obsessed with making money because that's what they're looking at. People get obsessed with their problems because that's what they're looking at. It's very simple to change the problem. Switch your eyes away from what you're looking at and put them on Jesus. Get your eyes on Jesus. The Lord spoke to me, it was almost 30 years ago. He said, son, you're a four-dimensional mirror. I said, what, Lord? He said, whatever you put in front of you, you will reflect. It's automatic. It doesn't take a lot of intelligence. I'm evidence of that. It doesn't take a high IQ. All it takes is an obsession for the truth. I'm telling you, I am guaranteeing you, every one of you, or your money back, that if you would just find all the scriptures you can find on Jesus, and you begin to think about Jesus, you begin to sing about Jesus. That's why I have a little book out there about the redemptive names of Christ, over 1,200 expressions of Jesus. 
If you'll just begin to think about Jesus, sing about Jesus, talk about Jesus, read in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matter of fact, the Lord had me do an adventure. He challenged me. He said, find me every time in the New Testament. And by the time I got done, which I'm right now doing it with a PDF file of the King James Version, and I am converting every time it refers to Jesus into a red letter. So when he says, me, my, I, his, Jesus, Christ, Lord, Every time in a 160-page New Testament Bible, small fine print, that's why from Matthew to Revelation, he is talked about over 10,000 times. 10,000 times. And yet people major on grace, and I believe in grace. They major on love, I believe in love. But it all comes out of Jesus. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, you shall appear with him in glory. You are soil. But when you plant the good seed, it's very important. You've got to do away with the bad seed. Now, I'm just going to tell some of you they are really, really radical. They used to criticize Smith Wigglesworth because all he would do is read the Bible. Let me tell you something, Jeremy. Put away the politics. Put away this and that. Just Jesus. Just Jesus. I guarantee in a month you'll be walking in a realm that you did not know even existed. Just put away the sports. Just put away the weather. I'm just telling you. He kept them in the wilderness where they could learn one thing. One thing. Now I'm not saying we don't need natural knowledge to function. But I'll tell you right now. You think Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego gave them to themselves to the natural knowledge of Nebuchadnezzar and the Chaldeans? No, they gave themselves to the Bible. They gave themselves to the Word of God. And when Nebuchadnezzar checked them out among all the other wise men from all the countries that they had captured, he found out that Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel had a spirit far superior than all of them. Because it's the Word that causes me to be complete. Because in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the same was with God from the beginning. And without the Word, without the Word, not words, without Jesus. See, you are soil. Begin to plant the seed of Jesus in us. We're going to, matter of fact, I'm working on a project right now where I'm going to put together a booklet with nothing but scriptures on Jesus powerful scriptures on Jesus you can begin to memorize and meditate on him and I'm telling you what you will take off like a rocket to the moon if you'll begin to meditate on nothing but Jesus and what he's done and who he is and what he's accomplished and, and, and matter of fact what does he tell us in John 15 he said if you abide in me and my word abides in you you shall ask what you will Woo! You can ask what you will. And what will you be asking? The Father's will. And it shall be done unto you. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. Now I'm just giving you the tip of the iceberg. When I talk about this tonight, you are a garden. You got to you pull all the, seed, the weeds. I'm serious. I, there was a time in my life, my wife and I was leaving a little church in Three Springs. I didn't, we didn't have internet in those days. I didn't have TV. I didn't have newspaper. I didn't have magazines. I, and, and, and for about two months, three months, I just gave myself to nothing but not memorizing a word, but speaking it, meditating, muttering it. You say, I don't mutter. Oh, yeah, right. You talk to yourself all the time. And I was just talking a word and talking a word and talking a word and talking a word. I didn't feel a thing. But I went to minister in a meeting in Mifflin County. It's in our book, Living Around the Miraculous. And I touched a man who had cataracts on his eyes. I didn't even pray for him. And the cataracts melted off of his eyeballs. He was weeping. He said, look at, look at my eyes, look at my eyes. I said, what? He said, the minute you touched me, the cataracts melted off my eyeballs. You know that, who that was? That was Jesus. That was the life flowing through a pipe. That's all I am. I'm just a vessel. See, that's what you are. You are a container. You are full of something. What are you full of? Ask your neighbor, what are you full of? We're supposed to be full of Jesus. We're supposed to be full of Jesus. So you are an oven. 
If you, before you came here this morning, if you stuck a turkey in there, a turkey is cooking. And when you get home, you're going to smell the aroma of the turkey. And you won't, you won't be able to wait to get your teeth into it. Or maybe you stuck a ham in there. Or maybe you stuck a roast in there. But whatever you stuck in the oven is cooking. Well, listen, if you put some, if you put what we call a pole cat, if you put a dead skunk in the oven, that's what's cooking. What's cooking in the oven of your mind? Something's cooking. See, I want the Lamb of God to be roasting in me. I want the Lamb of God to be cooking in my mind, in my heart. You are a oven. See, you are a consuming fire. And whatever puts in you begins to cook. It begins to bake. It begins to get done. And you know what? When, when, when you first stick something in the oven, you first if you stuck a turkey in the oven and you turn it up to whatever temperature, 350, 450, whatever temperature you're cooking at, you don't really smell anything right away. You can walk by the oven. You can't tell there's anything in there. But after an hour, after two hours, many times, my wife will put something in a slow cooker in the oven before we go to bed. And I wake up and it is so tempting when she's got a roast in there. I wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning. That's about the time I like to get up just to meditate and just to put it in the oven. And I, I wake up at 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, and I smell that turkey cooking. I go, whoo, man, that smells good. Then I sneak out of bed, and I go down, and I got to check it out. Because it's a cooking. You are an oven. You put the wrong stuff. He said, I just, man, I just can't stand the stuff I've been eating. I can't stand the smell that is coming off of me. I just can't stand. Well, pull that out of the oven. And put in what you want to cook. I'm telling you, that's how it can't be that simple, Pastor Mike. It is that simple. You put the Word of God into your heart, your mind. You let it cook. You let it bake. I read. Listen, if you had to choose between reading the books God has had us write and the Bible, read the Bible. I'm telling you right now, because when you begin to let Jesus cook in the oven of your heart, get Jesus in front of you, and you will reflect him. See, whatever you've been looking at, look at David. At one time, he was looking at God so intently and so passionately and so hungrily. He was looking at, at, at God so, and you can hear, how do you know David was looking at Jesus? How do you know Jesus, David was looking at God? Look at his songs. Look at the, he didn't sing sick sober and broken sad and disgusted ever since i started living for jesus i lost everything i had i mean david wasn't singing like, david wasn't it wasn't carrying on like a newborn calf in a tin barn roof on a cold winter night just crying and bawling and squalling how come you got some people that bawl and squall suck the thumb and fill their diapers who call themselves Christians. Why? Because it's simply they've got something different cooking in their oven. You know, the only difference between a spiritual man and a fleshly man is what they've got in their oven. Can you believe that? That is honest to God truth. If you'll meditate on a word night and day, if you'll put the word of God into your heart, if you'll just begin to strip out everything else that is useless and vain, well, Pastor Mike, somebody's got to know about politics. Well, why? Why don't we just vote for the lesser of two evil? Why do you have to know everything they think and everything believe? You know what? We need a miracle anyways. Our candidates for years have all been messed up. I mean, just messed up, man, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Listen, all I got to do is I just got to get my eyes on Jesus like Peter did, and I'll begin to walk on the water. All I've got to do is think about Jesus. You know, that's why they called them Christians in the early church. Because all, all you want to do is talk about Jesus. Remember when you first got born again? Let me tell you what Jesus did. You know, the Lord told me as we're getting ready to close this part of the service out, the Lord spoke to me. He said, son, he said, this next revival will not stop because of the fact they will not be bragging about a preacher or a man or somebody who's in this earth. The, in, in the natural flesh, they'll be bragging about me. They'll be bragging about Jesus. That's what I said. They'll be bragging about me, Jesus. They'll be bragging about Jesus because he will be exalted above all else. See, we need to lift up Jesus. You know, when the, when the bones, when you are physically sick, your bones will be exposed. 
if your bones are sticking out, if we can see your glistening, shining bone, if you're walking down the street and, you're, and your elbow's sticking out, we see the bone, something's wrong. When you're healthy, you don't see the bones. The Lord spoke to me. He said, son, when the body is healthy, you won't be seeing the five-fold ministry. You'll be looking at the head, and his name is Jesus. See, when God shows up, you ain't going to walk out of here and talk about Mike Yeager or, 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 or Fred Johnson or, 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 or uh, 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 Mary Lou. You're going to walk out and say, oh, Jesus was there today. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm believing with all my heart this is a transformational service for you. Now, it means you're going to have to crucify your flesh. It means you're going to have to believe what the Word says. It means, and I'm telling you right now, see, I believe that all of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. How are the manifestations of the sons of God going to come? I'll tell you how they're going to come. They are going to be people who are obsessed with nobody but Jesus Christ. Just Jesus. That's why that little book's out there, 1,200 names. I just, I memorized most of them. I just got obsessed with Jesus. Jesus, Jesus in the morning. Jesus in the new time. Jesus when the sun goes down. Well, Pastor Mike, there isn't really that much I, can, I need to know about Jesus. Are you kidding me? He upholds all things by the word of his power. He's the bishop of our soul. He's the king of kings. He's the captain of our salvation. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the lily of the valley. He's the anchor of our soul on the sea of trouble. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He's the ancient of days. He's our beloved groom. Come on, man. He's, he's from A to Z. He is so much. He is so much. And I tell people, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? How, how we go? And this is what Jesus said. He said, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood or you will have no life in you. Now let's just flip this. He is not, it's not, it's not, he's not saying he'll take away life. He says you will have no life. He says you must eat me and drink me. He's the Passover lamb. He said, if you will eat me. He is not a respecter of people. Tell the person next to you, he's talking about you. Listen. Pastor Mike, you mean if I eat the flesh of Christ, the word, and I drink the blood, which is the spirit, be filled with the spirit. See, it's not just the flesh, it's the blood. You've got to drink the blood. The, the, people don't understand this. The Holy Ghost is the blood of Jesus Christ. It is the blood of Jesus Christ. And he says, be filled with the Spirit. How? Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. You drink it. See, when you come in here, you just by faith begin to drink the blood. When you leave this place, drink the blood. Sing a song as you're going down the road. Quote a scripture as you're going down the road. Pastor, if you begin to drink and eat Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, you think you've experienced the things of God right now? Pastor, you will come into such a, I know you're already frightened because God, how God is moving on you. But pastor, I'm telling you what, it don't matter if you're 81. Because when you hit 120, your eyes will not be abated. Your eyes will not be dimmed and your, 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 your strength will not be abated. We have a better covenant than what Moses had. We have a better covenant than what he experienced. And we can, unless we're martyred, unless we lay down our lives, I believe until the day we leave this earth, we can leave strong, healthy, and moving in God. Can you shout amen? It's hard to make a commitment of nothing but Jesus because we are addicted to foolishness. We're addicted to vain amusements. We're addicted to stuff that isn't going to make a difference. My one vote isn't going to mean nothing. But if I get so full of Jesus, so full of Christ, if I eat, if I go, one thing you can do, you can gorge yourself with Jesus Christ. Gorge yourself. Gorge yourself. I know we got to push away from the plate when we go and we eat at, we, I call them hog troughs. I know we need to push away, but you don't have to push away from the table of the Lord. You can eat all of the lamb from head to tail. It doesn't matter your age. I'm telling you, this will work for everybody if you will gorge yourself with Jesus Christ and just begin to take a hold of the word. 
you'll begin to look just like Jesus. You'll begin to talk like Jesus, walk like Jesus. When you see a person is demon-possessed, you'll just say, in the name of Jesus, come out! You won't even think, and the demon will come out. Them that believe, these signs will follow them. Now, like every head bowed, every eye closed, maybe we have someone here this morning, you're not right with God. You don't really know Jesus. You have a form of religion, you have a form of godliness, but you don't really know Jesus. You, what I'm talking about is just over the top of your head, but the Holy Ghost is convicting you. And maybe everybody here does know Jesus. But if you're here this morning and you do not know Jesus and you want to know him, I want you to slip your hand up real quick right now. Real quick. I'm not going to give you a long time. If the Holy Spirit don't draw you, I can't draw you. The Holy Spirit, if you do not know Jesus, slip your hand up right now. And you want to know this Jesus. You all be praying. Because one soul is worth more than all the wealth of this world. If you do not know Jesus, you want to know him. Maybe you're in a condition where you say, Pastor Mike, I, 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 I have asked Jesus into my heart. But I, I really, Pastor Mike, I, I've not really been living for him. I, I've not really been walking with him. I have not really been following him. And, and I'm not talking about to the way you should, because all of us should go deeper than we are. I'm not talking about, I'm just saying, you know in your heart right now that you really are not right with God, and you want to get right with God. Slip your hands up right now. I see that hand. I see that hand. Anyone else? Okay, you can put down your hands. Anyone else? I perceive there's at least three of you that you know in your heart you're not right with God, and you want to get right with God. Okay, now if you lift up your hand, I want the person next to you to come up here with you, and you both come up. Okay, so Betty right there next to you, that precious sister there, bring her. And brother, bring your grandson up. Praise God for every time you respond to the wooing of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to take them over here now. Take them over here and, and you pray with her, Betty, and you pray with her. See, the Lord spoke to me. It's not a one-man show. It's not a one-man show. Anyone else that you want to get? God bless you, sister. God bless you. And just take her over to here then and minister to her. Okay. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Go right with her, sister. See, the Lord spoke to my heart and said there was at least three people that would get right with God this morning. At least three. Hallelujah. And when one sinner repents, the Bible says all of heaven rejoices. Amen. So now, I know many of you need healing. And I want to pray for you right now where you're at. So if you've got a physical affliction in your body... I want you to stand to your feet where you're at right now. you got something in your physical body you need to have healed right now. Jesus is here. Now, sister, just take her over there and have her pray with you. Have her pray with you and lead her to Christ. You know how to do that. So, listen, I want you to close your eyes because you're looking to Jesus. You're not looking to Mike Yeager. Uh, and if you can put your hand where that problem is right now, do it. The Bible says, them that believe will lay hands on the sick, that's you, and they shall recover. So we're going to pray. I'm going to have us all pray together because we have authority in the name of Jesus. Let's pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, I come against this affliction. I come against this attack. And I command this infirmity. Come out. Come out. Come out of my body. Right now, in Jesus' name. Now, when somebody gives you something, you thank them for it. So begin to thank God for your healing. Go ahead, thank them. Lift your hand and say, Lord, I thank you. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, let's give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. Now, you may be seated. By the way, we do partake of, a, of food. Did we make anything? Did you make anything, Nancy? Do we have something to eat over there? We have to believe God to multiply. We'd like to have fellowship after Sunday morning services because we're family. And if you want to start bringing food with you, cook some food, and we'll share it together after Sunday morning services. We do have a service at 2 o'clock and then also uh, tonight at 7 o'clock. Now, I'm going to give you a radical, listen to me, I d d two things. Number one. I do not want you to respond to this call if at this moment, two things, you're not convicted to, or number two, you don't really want to. For in other words, I don't want you to respond to the call I'm about to give because you don't want people to think that you're not right with God 
or that that you're you're not you know that 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 you're not spiritual because if they're judging you something's wrong with them because the call I'm giving it is for everybody but everybody's not ready for this kind of call what the Lord spoke to me he said cuz see I've made a commitment I said Lord nothing but Jesus Christ and the word the word nothing but Jesus Christ and 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 I, I really don't even know if any of you respond to this I believe that God is looking for some people and now I'm not talking about Christian music. I'm saying you're going to have to watch some of the teaching you're getting on TV if it doesn't exalt Jesus. If you hear a sermon and Jesus is never mentioned, you want to turn that person off. Because every word that came out of the mouth of the early church was Jesus. But this is what I want you to do. Those of you who would say, Pastor Mike, with all of my heart, I believe that God is calling me to separate myself from the world and to give myself to nothing but Jesus and the word. And by God's grace, I am going to do everything I can to cut everything else off but the word of God and Jesus Christ. And God helped me to do it. Now, if you mess up, and you probably will, just get back up, say, I repent, Lord, and do it all over again. And we're going to get you scriptures to memorize, not just those of you who respond, but the whole body. But I am excited about the manifestation of the sons of God. So if you'd be willing, and I'm even talking about, don't be going on Facebook and reading all this yada yada stuff and these social places. And I mean, turn off the news, turn off the radio, get out of the newspaper, get out of the sports, and give yourself to nothing but Jesus. That's a radical call. So really, I don't want you to be looking around and seeing if anybody responds to this. If no one responds to it, I'm just going to go deeper in prayer. But if God's calling you to do that, I want you to jump up and come here right now. If God is calling you to do that, wow. Just stand up on the green line of life. Wow. The green line of life, I'm telling you right now. Whoa. I'm telling you right now. Wow. You all are making that commitment? You're making that commitment to do nothing but Jesus? I just wanted to give you a chance to go back and sit down. That's, that's a strange way to approach this. But if you're not serious about this, please go back and sit down. Don't be up here because of the fact that you, you don't want somebody to think you're not spiritual. This is serious business. We're going to sit down in front of the covenant table of Jesus Christ and we are going to do nothing but eat Jesus Christ. Nothing but. No more soap operas. No movies. No, no, no news. No politics. Are you all sure you want to be up here? Wow. I'm telling you in three days, in three days, your life will be so radically different. Now, when I say nothing but Jesus, the minute that worry comes to your mind, the minute anxiety comes to your mind, the minute a symptom hits your body, you take the name of Jesus and you say, get off my property. Do you hear what I'm telling you? The minute the devil... Now, listen. Some of you are living together. Don't you dare correct the person living with you if you see them doing something contrary to this commitment. Don't you dare tell them, I thought you made a commitment to have nothing but Jesus. See, you're not the Holy Ghost. God will deal with them, amen? And you know what? You might find yourself falling five, six, seven times a day, but get back up, get back up, get back up, amen? amen. So we're just going to simply, and, and just lift your hands towards heaven and just cry out to God, say, Heavenly Father, I come to you today in the name of Jesus and I recognize all I need is Jesus. I commit myself and I dedicate myself right now to you, spirit, soul, mind, and body. I give myself to Jesus. I will eat his flesh and I will drink his blood in Jesus' name. I'll just begin to thank him for it. I'm just going to lay hands with you. Pastor Richard, if you want to come with me. Pastor Richard, we're just going to lay hands real quick. Go ahead, Jeremy. You can catch. Father, I thank you for the commitment now that Vicki has made. Let it be. Let it be. In Jesus' name. 
Right now, in the name of Jesus, let that commitment be in the name of Jesus. Lord, let that commitment be in the name of, woo, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let that commitment be in the name of Jesus. Whoa, that's the power of God. See, because you've stepped into it, Lord, let that be, let that be, let that be, let that be in the name of Jesus right now. <laughs> That's a radical commitment, Bill. <laughs> Let it be in Pam, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! Say yes, Lord. Wow, things are going to be different at home. In the name of... You just saved a bunch of money. You don't need a cable anymore. You don't need TV. Praise the Lord in the name of Jesus. Woo! In the name of Jesus. Let it be. Wow. In the name of Jesus. Woo! What a commitment. Ho, ho, woo, let the fire of Christ burn, woo, woo, let it bubble in her, Lord, let it boil in her, Lord, whoa, let it flow, God, out of your belly, <laughs> yeah, that's the joy, see, that's faith rising in your heart, faith rising in your heart, joy, joy. No, we don't push nobody down, sister. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, let it overwhelm her. Now, Lord, woo, take a hold of her. Take a hold of her. And it's not the position of your body. It's the position of your heart. In the name of Jesus. Oh, oh, my, my. Woo, in the name of Jesus, let it be now, let it be now, let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Oh, Lord, bring forth that mighty man of faith and valor. Bring forth the mighty man of God as he saturates himself with nothing but Jesus. Lord, overtake him, overtake him, overtake him in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, obsessed with Jesus Christ. Obsessed with the word of God. Obsessed with nothing but the Lord. Nothing but the Lord. Nothing but Jesus. Nothing but Jesus, Lord. Even if he gave himself to the world, he's giving himself to you. Oh, wow. Well, I'm telling you, even by tonight, even by tonight, there will be such a transformation in your life, you won't be able to hardly believe it. Lord, I thank you now. I thank you for my son, Michael. He's making this commitment to give himself to nothing but Jesus. Nothing but Jesus. Nothing but Jesus. Holy Ghost is all over you, sister. Spirit of God, the Spirit of grace is all over you. Oh, Lord, quicken her, touch her. Lord, even from the top of her head to the tips of her toes. Lord, overwhelm her. Woo Let the fire burn. Let the fire burn, Lord. In the name of Jesus, take a hold of my son. May he never be the same, Lord, as he gives himself to nothing but the word. Nothing but the word. Say that. Nothing but the word. Nothing but the word. Nothing but the word. Nothing but the word. Woo-ho! Yes, Lord, let the fire burn. Lord, I can smell Jesus cooking in her oven. <laughs> what a sweet aroma. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Nothing but Jesus, brother. Nothing but Jesus, brother. Nothing but... See, the devil says we got to have other stuff. That's all a lie. He wants to keep us out of the glory. He wants to keep us out of the place where the power of God comes on us. Whoa, nothing but the word. Woo, nothing but Jesus. Nothing but Jesus. Jack, you will be so radically transformed. I'm telling you what, man, you plant that seed into the garden of your heart, it'll be like Jack and the beanstalk. I mean that. I'm telling you what, man, you'll be sitting, you'll be climbing that, you'll be climbing that vine and killing the giant. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, nothing but the word, Tiny. Wow. Of course, you've already been there, but Lord, I thank you for it. Nothing but the word. Nothing but the word. Nothing but the word. Nothing but the word. And his name is Jesus. Lord, I thank you for my precious sister now. Lord, you've touched her. You've moved upon her. You drawn her by the Holy Ghost to be right with you. And Lord, now help her. Help her walk with you. Help her to love you. Help her to serve you and to follow you. In Jesus' name, nothing but the word. Nothing but the word, Nancy. Woo! Nothing but Jesus. <laughs> you know what? You say, how can I get full of nothing but Jesus? Well, we got three services a day. 
2 o'clock this afternoon, nothing but Jesus. Yes, yes, wow, Lord. Jeremy. Yes, Lord. That's a radical commitment, Jeremy. And you're a man of your word. Nothing but Jesus. Nothing but Jesus. You'll be so overwhelmed by the Holy Ghost, you, you won't Jesus. know what to do. Oh, I'm telling you, it will explode thank in you. Lord. And you've got to do it by faith. Yes, Even though Lord. it doesn't seem like it's working, it doesn't seem like oh, anything's Lord. happening, you just give yourself to thank Jesus. You, Jesus! Yes. Jesus! Hallelujah. Jesus! Yes, Lord. Yes. Jesus! Nothing but Jesus. Nothing but Jesus, Rich. Let's give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, dance a little bit. Go ahead, dance a little bit. Come on. <laughs> You'll get there. Come on, Joseph. Move your feet a little bit there. <laughs> there you go. Woo! Amen. Oh, Lord, isn't God wonderful? Tell somebody next to you, put your seatbelt on. Put your seatbelt on because it's about to become a wild ride. Amen. Can you imagine? Huh? Right there. Just radical for Jesus. Amen. Stand to your feet. Honey, you want to come and sing that? Let's, isn't God good? Aren't you glad you're here this morning instead of in a hospital? Aren't you glad you came? Come on, let's give the Lord one more hand clap and a shout. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's just put some music on. Listen, we love you. Father, we bless the food as we partake. Bless our fellowship. Bring us back safe to 2 o'clock service and the 7 o'clock service tonight. And Lord, help us to bring the blind, the lame, the hot, and the needy with us. Help us to bring the prostitutes, the drug addicts, the outcasts. Help us to bring our neighbors, our friends, our relatives, our outlaws. Lord, help us to bring them all in Jesus' name. And everybody shouts, Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. And uh, come back at 2 o'clock. We're going to have an awesome service. And you can lay here under the power of the Spirit all day. You can run and dance and shout and sing. Aren't you glad you came?